Welcome back to the Charismatic Points and Happy Halloween. To celebrate, we're going to be listening to the band Halloween. This is going to be my first time, and I'm really excited to hear them because their second album was described as the most influential power metal album to date. Now, I've just been on this metal kick, really getting to know it better because of your recommendations, and I'm excited to know where power metal came from. So thank you so much for this recommendation. I know we have other Halloween recommendations I didn't get to, but we'll get to them in the future, maybe next year. The band is going to be performing today, Keeper of the Seven Keys. That's probably shocking to some of you. I was sure that the patrons would choose Halloween by Halloween, but no, they said for first time listening, I should really check out Keeper of the Seven Keys. And I looked at the lyrics some, it looks like there's a big battle with the devil, he's the main antagonist, and there's lots of fantasy elements as well, so it is very Halloweenish. so we're, we're still good. And to uh, continue the celebration, I know I couldn't help but bring a little piece of my Halloween costume this year. I love red pandas so much. So I invite you to dress up a little bit too with me and let's listen to Halloween. This next one is from Keep Us Up Keys Part 2. It's like uh, an opera. It's actually starts this one. Keeper of the Seven Keys. <laughs> it's like an opera but how like as an opera singer what do you mean by it's like an opera i guess we'll find out so sparkly is really nice um it just it sounds like really healthy too i guess we'll, we'll find out some more about that but uh i i really love the way he sounds like he's just connected like all the way down to the bottom of his gut uh he's not just singing with breath control from his diaphragm he's he sounds like he's actually connecting below his diaphragm there are muscles even below it like all the way down to your pelvic floor that help with breath control on the way out he's connected all the way down there that's great that's great he's singing with his whole body it feels so um it feels like it's a, a natural um instinctive sound for him i like it uh it's here uh. quality of sound that he had in his lower I was just not expecting that sudden jump an octave higher that he has a lot of power behind that and it doesn't sound like he has like way more power that he had to emit in order to bring out these high notes it actually sounded like he almost had his own uh, self compressor on so he had equal volumes in both of those registers and very similar tone qualities you usually hear more of a shift of tone quality when you're going into different registers that was cool. Okay, I understand why you wanted me to listen to him a lot now. He's he's fascinating. Oh, back a little bit. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this, this voice has got so many different possibilities in it. I'm really, really, really digging it. Uh, I, he sounds so young too. It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, so I like the way he's able to have just a really clean sound. Like he has, it sounds like his vocal fold closure is like right on, very efficient. Um, but then at one point he even introduced like a little bit of extra edge to the sound to make it a little bit more paint. And that was nice. And uh, also he's very, very good at controlling his vibrato. I love, he's just holding it completely straight. And then often at the end, he'll give it a little bit. Very clearly has excellent, excellent control. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, the I was excited to hear blast beats in there. I know that's something I'm supposed to watch for when I listen to power metal now. So I was like, oh yeah, cool. Blast beats. They were a thing for Halloween already. Cool. Um, also, I was really, really enjoying um, looking at his stance on the stage. So I was thinking to myself, wow, this voice is able to just blast and he sounds young. So that means he must have some fantastic technique. Usually that means that you have like a lot of support. So usually that would, um, that would be like the muscles again that are below your larynx. Um, those muscles help in supporting your voice. So to me, I see him taking this stance in the floor that looks like he's really grounding himself. That helps him not to have just tons of air smack into his larynx and really wear it down. So he's keeping his air support really low in his body. That can, that I think that's one of the only ways a person can really just belt for years and years and years and not suffer lots of damage. And he's doing just that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, also right there was a really cool time signature shift. It starts having this feeling of three underneath it. So it goes like, bun, da, 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 da. that's not three, four. That kind of like swingy feeling means that there's probably an eight on the bottom. And before we probably had a four on the bottom of the time signature. FYI, uh, let's go back there. There's his uh, stance. Check that out. He's so grounded. He's got incredible support. I confess, I have been listening primarily to his vocal production and not paying attention to the lyrics. And I was going to pay attention to the lyrics because they're very like fantasy and Halloween themed. Um, I know that we we have this fight with the devil here. I have some back here. Let's look at them again. So uh, there was this part we talked about like, will the wisps misguiding your path? You can't throw a curse without taking their wrath. Like. 
these lyrics are really cool. I'm just a vocal nerd and I am listening to the vocal production so much. Sometimes it's hard to catch the lyrics. Gotta confess. Um, but that being said, uh, I know that this is really, really epic. And I think there are seven different keys or maybe I saw somewhere that looked like the sixth one didn't get in there. So I'm curious what that's about. Please leave comments below talking about the lyrics and analysis of them. I'll look at a couple other stanzas while we're going on too. Every time he jumps up like that, it's more than an octave. And that is a big jump. That's not easy to do, but you don't see him lifting in his body. When singers really go up to sing high notes, they usually get off of their support. And that's uh, that makes the high note more difficult, makes the line, the vocal line, also uh, more jagged, less smooth. He's able to just give a block of sound because he's just so grounded. He's like the poster child of how to ground your voice. I I love that he's having the audience sing this refrain here. You guys know uh, I love audience involvement. A lot of artists get detached from their audience at some point, and the ones that let the audience sing with them, I'm always a really big fan of. It's important to remember who you're singing for. Uh, let's look at these words a little bit. Let's see. Um, you're the keeper of the seven keys that lock up the seven seas. And the seer of vision said before he went blind. Oh, is that the right verse? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's the refrain. Hide them from demons and rescue mankind. Or the world we're all in soon will be sold to the throne of the evil played with Lucifer's gold. Whoa. Wow, there's so much symbolism in this already. I think about uh, the Seer of Visions. Who's the Seer of Visions before he went blind? And definitely, uh, there's definitely this battle uh, uh, with Lucifer. That's that's awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, and I like the idea of rescuing mankind. It feels like it's this epic hero kind of journey that's happening. Uh, I Anytime we get into that fantasy Dungeons and Dragons, you know that I'm a big fan of that. Um, any of that. I just, I get really wrapped in by the story, unless it's an amazing voice and I just have to keep listening to the voice. So we're gonna keep listening to the voice. <laughs> a little down in the support like that's that's good that's really good okay
Ooh, that was a cool beat. Ooh, nice, 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 nice. Uh, I like seeing all of the, I know, all of the different guitar uh, appearances. I, this is ridiculous. We have like a, one that has pumpkins, we have one that has eyes on it, and then one that was like just sparkles. So uh, I don't play guitar. Um, I do appreciate really awesome musicianship. I, I used to just love like hanging over the lip into the pit and watching the orchestra while we were doing off rehearsals. Love, love, love that. And the feeling uh, when you're on a stage with the orchestra behind all around, it's just gorgeous. Love it. Um, but I'm really impressed now. I, I liked the way that the drummer switched up the beat a bunch. Sometimes you almost lost the groove a little bit as he was going to like a melodic train of the drums. And then he would bring it back like in kind of like a disjunct way and then help you get back into it. So that way it, it really, it made it so you didn't take that for granted anymore. Oh, let's keep going. <laughs> he's so good at just nailing the same pitch over and over again he like no there's uh sometimes people talk about like singing in a pocket and he has a pocket that he sings in it is just right there he knows exactly how to get in the zone and stay there Mm, mm. I love the little tiny, just the teensy bit of pitch bend that he did at the end of that. I've heard him doing that in a couple other places too. It makes it feel even more epic and also gives like a tiny bit of paint. So he just took the pitch and bent it down a tiny bit. Was it really truly a slide that would have been more? This was much more subtle. Just fantastic. I love the way that they switched tempos right at his high note. Um, and the way the, the beat changed behind it, it felt even more intense as it was going on disease, 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 my friend, right? And I love um, the way he's making that not a really long line lyrically. The writing is interesting to me um, because disease crumbles things, so it shouldn't be like a really long lyric line. And then it gets up to the top here and it just slowed everything down. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the death or something. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too dark, even for Halloween. And let's see, disease, 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 my friend, for this whole world's in devil's hands. Uh, disease, 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 my friend, throw the key or you may die. You know what? It is die. He's singing die on top. Yeah, that was perfect. So it sounds like everything is just kind of like stopped. Like it's a cry of pain, maybe the last cry of life. <sighs> Really cool. Let's listen to that tempo shift again.
Um, I definitely feel like this has different acts. Maybe that's why it's like an opera. Uh, it has like different acts going in or maybe different scenes. And uh, this last one, the thing that I was just loving the most was this really clear melody in the guitar line. It was extended. It was long. Um, it's so fun to see guitars just, you know, like really play tons of fast notes. Uh, I love that sort of virtuosity. But at the same time, this just really lingering melody that they were playing, I thought was, uh, I felt like it grabbed me even more. It's kind of fantastic. I like this transition where the you feel the drums shift in differently. Oh, and it's the bass too. first because I was like oh that's a different sound it's a different singer I remember uh, I think in my prep I saw his name is Andy I want to say I think this is Andy correct me if I'm wrong in the comments please um that's cool okay I'm gonna go back and catch this entrance once more um so you have uh lyrics by the way uh on the mound at the shore of the last sea his sitting fixing your sight with his high iron voice causing sickness he's playing you out with delight. Oh, it's so cool. I'm I love that they brought in another singer here and I'm I'm looking forward to listening to those harmonies a little bit more now. Oh, now let's go back further. So he has, uh, Andy, I think, definitely has like a more uh, dirty, dirty sound, like a little more grit and gravel happening in his voice, which is going to be an interesting contrast, I think, to uh, Michael Kiske's voice. Love these two guys together. Huh. I can't put my finger on it, but this just so heavily reminds me of a video game soundtrack. I'm trying to remember what it is. I'm accessing it's not happening. Tell me again in those comments below what video game soundtrack this reminds you of. Um, I feel like it's a platformer of some sort. Uh, anyhow, um, I, it's really fun. Like I kind of like, I like want to be like bouncing around and being like pew pew. Anyhow.
metal and classical music have so much in common. I think in this part, it sounds like they're like uh, going around in, I think it's a, a six a parallel six that they're moving around in a bunch. It's uh, it's very functional harmony, uh, good writing. And uh, on top of that, it's so fun to hear how they'll go off and have these like really awesome virtuosic moments and then come back to this really tight knit duet together. I swear this could be a violin and a viola in some huge concerto. So I just, I dig so much how much power metal features instrumentalists in addition to the singer. It doesn't feel like it's always singer focused. Uh, it gives much more love to instrumentalists who've practiced just as hard and deserve just as much spotlight. <laughs> I also love the support that the band members show each other. Like, it's so fun to see Kiski come up to this other guy with the amazing hair and just be like, yeah, jam out. This is awesome what you're doing. I love that kind of camaraderie. Uh, it just shows that they're all really awesome colleagues. Um, by the way, uh, an earthquake squirting fire, bursting ground, Satan screaming, and earth swallowing him away. Sounds like good as victorious. Love it. Oh, nice gravel there. <laughs> mm, very good. Yay! Chorus with harmony. Okay, this is gonna be gorgeous. Well, gorgeous, but in a really powerful, cool way. love the breath control that they have there and the blend of their two voices. Let's go back and hear that again. So I did watch until the end here and they do this awesome wrap up with the audience and you guys should totally watch that too in the original video link. Well, let's talk about that overall performance, especially vocally, what was happening. I was amazed by his stamina. Like that is so much to be pumping out the whole time. 
but he's able to do it because of how grounded his support system is. If you ever wondered what fantastic breath support looks like, just look at Kiski. Really incredible performance on his end and really incredible performance from the instrumentalist as well. I wish I knew more about every single one of those instruments. I can appreciate just the pure, wow, that, how many different fast notes and the range of notes and all of those, all of those things going together. And of course, um, their musicianship, being able to shift different time signatures. But I know that they are so much better that I can even put my finger on. So um, bravo, bravo, bravo to everybody involved. This band is so good. They're so good. I'm not surprised that they are one of the founding power metal movers in Europe. So uh, thank you so much for giving me the chance to listen to them. Thank you for recommending this song first. I just loved getting to hear Kiski's voice more. Wow, 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 wow. You guys are awesome. Please make those recommendations still. Uh, keep making them down below in the YouTube comments. And also come and say hello to me on YouTube on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. I have premieres at 8 a.m. Arizona time. And you can also find me on Patreon and you can take my course on singing if you go to thecharismaticvoice.com. I hope to see you somewhere else soon. Thanks. Oh, and happy Halloween. Thank you.